you have been making arrays wrong in Construct. And this is why. When you go into Construct and you want to create an array, we insert a new object, we select array, and we give it a name. Once we've done that, we go to our event sheet and we create this mess. This is for a really, really simple Pokemon game. And what we've got is we've got the Pokedex entries for Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. And it's a little bit of a mess. Even with me separating this into three different events, I could easily just have this as one event. I could add comments. I could do whatever I want. It's still a mess. And what makes this even more tricky is if I copy and paste this and I want to add in a new Pokemon. Because to add a new Pokemon, I've got to change the Y value. I then got to change what the index value is for this Pokemon, which I'd have to do anyway. I then change the name. So this one is now going to be Bulbasaur. And again, I need to make sure that I change this from three to four. I then go down to the typing. And again, I need to change three to four. I then need to change this to water. And to do this for 151 entries is going to be a huge pain. So I'm not going to do this. I'm going to remove all of this and hit delete. I'm going to show you the better way to do your arrays. What we're going to do is go down to where it says files. We're going to right click, insert a new file and add an array. This gives us a table format and we can change the height and width. So I can give myself some extra columns. I can give myself some extra rows. If I really want, I can create 151 rows for the 151 Pokemon. And we can even add in depth. So if you need to add in multiple tables, I could say add four tables here. And if I was just to add in a dummy value, say one, when I go to my next sheet, so that's no longer on there. So I'm able to have multiple sheets. Works really, really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add in a Pokemon. So I've got my first Pokemon added here and this has been much quicker to enter. I also want to show you some of the other benefits. So poison, I spelled it wrong. It actually spell checks it for me. So I can change that and get that corrected. Now, once I've done one of them, I can actually take this whole row, copy it and paste it in multiple times. And I can go through it after and I can start changing these values. And again, I don't need to change anything else such as the index value. I can just type it in. So still grass poison, I can increase these stats. So this makes life much faster and much easier to enter this data in without having to use these annoying sort of values that we've done before. This is all well and good. However, my new array, which I'm just going to rename Pokedex, is in a file and I need to get it now into a format that I can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my array that I've created and I'm going to pass all the values from this table into my array. So first thing we need to do is click on our Pokedex and we either need to resize it now. So I'm going to make it the same size, so 8, 151, 1. Or what you can do is you can do on start of layout, you can copy the values from your file. Next, we can add in a new object and we'll scroll right to the bottom and we're going to add in Ajax. Now this is for web pages. It also allows us to open files. And we're ready to move to our event sheet. So first I'm going to do is a system action and we're going to scroll down to on start of layout. And then what we're going to do is add an action with Ajax. And what we're going to do is request a project file. Now, in terms of your project files, you need to first give it a tag. So I'm just going to call this Pokedex and I'll copy and paste this just for later. And then what file do I want to open? Now, by default, every time you create a construct project, it creates loads of icons for you that you can then change for your own icons later on if you want to publish your game. We've also got the loading logo and then anything after that is your own files. So Pokedex.json. I'm going to hit done. I'm then going to add in one new event below, Ajax, and I want the on complete option, paste in my tag and hit done. And then finally, we're going to add an action, an array that you've created yourself as you normally would, making sure it's got those correct dimensions. We're going to click on that and we're just going to go to load. And then for this, we're going to do Ajax dot last data and hit done. Now you've got an array that you can use as normal as you've been doing before. However, all of your array data is stored nicely in a file that looks like this, that's easy to change, easy to manipulate, and you no longer need to have that annoying code that you had before. Now, apologies for the lack of content recently. I've not been very well, but like and subscribe to the channel because I'll be now back to my regular schedule.